Good day everyone. Today we plan to visualize some very simple properties of a circle. The model that we are going to use is also different. Different in the sense that we have a board with small pins nailed into it as you can see here. Depending upon what you want to study, you have the board. We are going to talk about a circle. So as you can see here, there are nails pinned all the way along a circle equidistantly. There are some nails over here and some outside on the other sides also to see different things. And the properties that we are going to see here on the, this is called a geo board by the way. And the properties that we are going to see on the geo board are the ones that are very simple and they seem to be simple because we use them so often. But all the same, this is a nice way of looking at it. What we have is, as we said, geo board. And on the geo board, we are not going to draw anything. If we want a straight line, what we will do is, we will use rubber bands. Here are rubber bands. And from one nail to another, depending upon where we want the line, we will uh, put the rubber band in the two nails. I have shown here two rubber bands put here already. Now, the simple properties that we can start with, when we are ready to start with the properties now that we know what the board is like and how to use it. Oh, one thing. When we talk about the length of this line, say, we will not measure in the scale, but we shall take just like this and we will say, okay, this is the length. That's how we are going to take the length. Not only that, but even the measure of the angles, we will not use a protractor. If I want to use, measure this angle, I will put the paper here and fold it and say that this is the angle. That is how we are going to use the paper and a small stick to find the angles and the lengths. Now, the first thing and the simplest thing that we know about a circle is that radius is half the diameter. Okay, let's see. The radius has to start from the center and go to any one point on the circle. So here is our radius. And now we want the diameter. <coughs> the diameter can be from anywhere. <coughs> Excuse me. But it has to pass through the center. So that's the diameter. And now what we want to show is that the radius is half the diameter or the diameter is double. So we measure this. Of course it is obvious all these are radii and therefore it is clear. But otherwise this is the radius and the diameter is one radius and two second radius. So the diameter is twice the radius. That is what we can show like this. Now, some more results, like <clears throat> a radius is perpendicular to the tangent. Now, the two rubber bands that I have fixed here, they represent two tangents from an external point. They show that from one point, you can have two tangents. That is one result that we have seen here now by the rubber band. And then, every radius is perpendicular to the uh, I mean, every tangent is perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact. So we have the tangent and now we have taken the radius and let us see whether they are perpendicular. For perpendicular, we take this as a right angle 
the ready-made corner of the paper and you can see that this is a right angle. So the radius is perpendicular to a tangent at the point of contact. <coughs> now, there is one more thing that we can do and that is as long as we are there with the two tangents, we are joining <coughs> we are joining the external point with the center and now we will be able to see that the two angles formed by the two tangents with this line that we just had are the same and how do we measure that well same thing So this is the angle and this extra part I fold here. So now this is the angle between the tangent and the line and you can see that it is the same above the line also. So both the angles are equal. Okay. The first thing that we did was we took the figure is there already. All the same, okay, I think I did not draw the figure, I will refer to this. The first thing that we did was that the radius was half the diameter. So the first thing that we did was the radius is half the diameter. The second thing that we did was that the radius is perpendicular to the tangent. The third thing that we did was that from an external point if we draw tangents we get two tangents and the, both the tangents are equal. So I am not writing everything. But from a given point, there are two tangents, two tangents from an external point. And both equal. And the last thing that we did was that these two tangents, both the tangents, they make equal angles with the line joining the point and the center. So both tangents make equal angles. with the line joining this point and the center. So that's what we did in the first part. And now we go over to the second part in which I will remove some of the rubber bands which I do not need anymore. I will keep just one tangent. property and the property is commonly known as angles in the same segment are equal. What is meant thereby in the statement is that you take any chord. I want to connect it with the tangent so I will take a chord with the same point here. 
I'm taking any cord here. This is a cord. And now, we take an angle which this cord makes on any point of this circumference. But if we can take it here or here. We are taking it on the bigger side so we can see it properly, but it, they should be on the same side. That is why we call angles in the same segment. So now, this was the chord and this is the angle which it subtends at the circle. We want two of them. Already taken one angle. To take the second angle, I take another rubber band. Place it on the same cord. And find out some point somewhere. So here are the two angles and now we measure them and in order to measure them we take this paper, put it here exactly and fold and then fold the extra part and so here is the angle that we have made and as you can see this angle is precisely so much and it's the same here too. So the two angles are equal, we have verified that. There is another property which says, I will remove the extra part that we don't want. That the angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to, that means this angle here, is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. We know that the chord makes two segments of the circle. Alternate is the one that does not lie on the same side of the tangent, so it is this one. Or in other words, it is an angle of this type somewhere here. So we have kept this and we would like to show now that this angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. Now this angle we had already. All we have to do is show that it is equal to the other angle and we can see that the two angles are equal. So. That is how it takes care of the second property and we, next, we can now go over to the next one. Coming to the last property that we want to see here on the geo board is the one which we use very often and they seem very natural to us because of that and that is this. I will first take a rubber band and do something here and then we shall see what the property is. We are taking a line segment through this rubber band and it should, I am taking from the center so the line segment passes through the center. Also, I want it to be perpendicular to the cord. I tried to do that but I would like to check and you can see here that here is a right angle and that's a right angle so that is okay. And there is one more thing that happens here is that this length from the point of intersection from the point of intersection to the end and from the point of intersection to the end they are equal. In other words, the line L that we have drawn is perpendicular to the, I mean, it bisects the chord AB. Okay, whatever we have done here, I'll write down and then look at what we have and what we would like to prove. We have a circle. We have a chord. And from the center O, we take a line L, which is perpendicular to the line segment at B. And it so turns out that these two are also equal. Now what we are doing is, what we are doing now is that we have a line L such that 
It passes through O. Two. It passes through M. The midpoint of AB. Chord. And thirdly. Is perpendicular. the chord AB. Now, we saw that these three things are happening, but the beauty of it is that all three things happen. We can see that here in the model. Here is the line segment through O, passing through the midpoint, and also perpendicular. All three are happening. The beauty of this result is that out of these three, if we are given any two of them, the third will automatically follow. For example, we are taking the line now, L, this is the line L, it passes through the center O, so we are taking the first thing, and the second thing, it passes through M, here. So these two conditions we are taking, and we can see that it is perpendicular also. So the third condition we don't have to check, I mean we don't have to make sure all right, now let's draw perpendicular. It is going to be perpendicular. Similarly, we take the second and third. So, the line passes through M and it is perpendicular. M is the midpoint. So, this is in other words perpendicular bisector. And then you can see that it passes through the center O. All right. Now, first and third. We are taking a line through O and perpendicular to AB and we check that then these two are equal. So, M is the midpoint and it passes through M. Or in other words, if we want to sum up, we can say that the result is that any two of these will imply the third. Okay. Isn't that nice? That three things should happen, but we don't have to take all three.